I've been asked to record myself using gradients to fix uh, a splotchy backdrop. Now, first thing I do anytime I open a photo, of course, is to glance down here and make sure it's in sRGB, which it is. That's great. Before I add the gradient layer, I can see that there's an angle at play here. You can see that the line of the backdrop there. So I'll just get my ruler tool, which hides under the eyedropper tool, and I'll just roughly draw that angle and have a look in the um, info panel up here. It says minus 4.8 degrees. Fair enough. I'll just remember that number. So now I'm going to get my polygon lasso tool, and I'm just going to roughly go around the outline of the subject loosely following the shape but not too close it's important to have a bit of space and instead of joining up here I'm actually going to go around the outside so I'm selecting everything but the child like so then I go and add my gradient layer and I'll choose one with uh, quite a lot of colors I'll choose this one it's, it's a good four color one that I can start with. I hate how the ends aren't at the ends here so I'll just move those out there. Now just now I'll go OK to that because I need to put in that um, number 4.8 it was so I'm going to go 90 take away 4.8 so 85.2 there. We'll just put it on that slight angle there. Always have dither turned on and in this case I'll turn off, in most cases in fact turn off align with layer. Okay, so now I'm going to click back on here and I'll start setting these colors. First of all the top color, I'll click on the little blue square and then sample top color there. Click on the orange square, look where the richest orange is, sample there. Click on the purple, sample there. Click on the yellow, sample there. Okay, so that's roughly right except of course there's this dark area here. I'm going to use this one for that. I'll just move it along a bit. I can't quite tell where it is but if I click there to sample the color now I can see it's roughly there. And at the moment those colors are all fading together evenly but of course that's a pretty quick fade there isn't it for that seam. So I'm going to click here to create another spot, another color swatch just beside it and click there and click here to create another color swatch just above it and click there. Okay, I hope you can sort of see where I'm going with this. I might put another one there so that will be sort of the hair color. Up here I need to click on that swatch because see how that's not dark enough? I don't need to make another one. I'll just use the one that I've got there, click on it and darken. I'll just lower the brightness value a bit until that's about right. Now coming back to here, this is better but it's still a bit too broad isn't it, that transition. So I'm going to click on that little swatch, increase its location slightly. I hope you can see what's happening when I when I do that there. And click on this one here and move its location slightly. Yeah that's not bad actually. This one needs to go even a little higher like so. What do you reckon? I think I've, I haven't quite got that angle right so I'm just going to OK out of there and I'll just uh, maybe make that, I don't know, 86? Yeah, that might be a bit better. I'll just click on there. Now I'm going to have to move all of these locations slightly. Alright, so you can see this is a bit painstaking to um, get this just right. I realize that one's a little bit light now so I'll just darken it a tiny bit. The one layer that's probably not too bad. Now I think, see this doesn't match here does it? So I'll need another swatch maybe about here and I'll just sample that color there. There we go. Okay so now I'm looking down here and all the tones are a pretty good match. Maybe that one I just added could be a tiny bit brighter, maybe about there is good. I'm happy with that, I'll go OK. So it's good on this side, but it's all too light on this side, isn't it? So I'm going to add another gradient layer, 
this will be a plain uh, foreground to transparent that's great um, but presently it's bottom to top I need it to no not that way 180 yeah so the dark side is over there of course do that as usual turn off align with layer I'm going to go OK to that for a minute because what I need to do is clip that there on my PC Control alt g on a Mac um, Command Option G on PC on Elements it will be Control G PC uh, sorry Mac on Elements would be Command G okay so I've clipped that there and then I'll just double click to go into this again and I it's extending oh sorry the other thing I have to do is make that multiply mode it doesn't could go could work on normal mode but multiply is probably a bit safer okay double click there now presently we need the transparency like we don't need any uh, of the gradient showing on this side it's only that side on this side we don't need it that strong so I'm going to click on that opacity and then I'm going to take it way down like 20% uh, maybe even a bit lower I'm looking so it loosely matches along there maybe this can even come across a bit further well that's too far hmm. so I know it doesn't blend in the middle there but I'm not too concerned about that area because the existing backdrop was quite good in that area I just want it to blend as well as possible in the top and bottom areas here yeah, I think that's okay go okay to that and okay to that now if I turn off everything on and off there you can see what I've done so far now there's one thing that I forgot to do on the first layer I don't need that coming all the way down here we, we, we want to keep some of that texture in the ground so I'm going to double click on that go to there working the opacity again I'm going to add another opacity swatch at about you know sort of up here like so and then this opacity swatch which correlates to down here I'm going to make that 0% I hope you can see what happened there now it's strong here but fades out down here so that the original floor texture is there I'm going to go OK to that let's have another look at that on and off alright so now I'm going to completely hide that and then get myself a big soft white brush and just start putting that on where I want it around here down this side is fine I really don't need it at all to be honest or maybe just there a bit it's this side that was more problematic with all the blotches wasn't it and I'll just keep painting all the way down here and around there and sort of in there a bit alright so let's have a look at that on and off now this is where I have another look at the gradient I used and I start to think mm, maybe that wasn't quite right there I'll just double click on that and just move that up a little bit I guess I'm being a bit pedantic but this is all important stuff alright the other thing I'm looking for as I'm turning on and off is to make sure that none of my masking has actually obscured anything important and I can see a little bit of the um, balloon being obscured there so I'll just fix that the fingers seem okay that all seems pretty good the last thing to do is to add the noise layer so I'll go to pattern got that selected there already because it's about the only pattern I ever use clip that to there change the mode to linear light drop the opacity to about 5% I guess and then just zoom in to examine that you won't be able to see this on the video but I'm just making sure that noise is no stronger nor weaker than the natural grain in the image itself alright so that is my gradient layer replacement start to finish.